Alrighty, welcome back everybody. So today I'm going to be going over how to paint faces for this uh, the Stark Angel Space Marine. And I'm going to start, I'm, I'm just going to go over the colors as we go over them because uh, there's a lot of colors to do on this one. So the first color I'm going to be using is Bugman's Glow. And that's just going to be to get down the base coat all the way around his face. Hold on, I'm going to do a much better job of staying in camera this time. <laughs> So you can see I'm just getting it, you know, all the way around the whole face with the Bugman's Glow. Get to the ear. If you miss a little, it's okay. You can just go back and touch it up as usual. Gonna get this entire Bugman's glow layer down on him. And we do want a nice coat of this, so you may have to do two thin coats, which I'm probably gonna do here. As our uh, our famed Duncan Rhodes used to say. Got to get them two thin coats on there. Okay, and now I'm just going to let that first layer dry for a second. And now while I let that dry, I'm going to go ahead and start the hair color. For this guy, I'm going to do just regular black hair. So I'm going to start with the Abaddon Black. It's just getting all your nice little base coats on here. You want to try and be careful not to mess up any of the stuff you already have going on in there, like the headgear. I am going to touch that up afterwards, but for right now, you just want to try and be as neat as possible going around it. Now normally I thin all my paints, but this black when I bought it was super, super liquidy. So when I thin it, it literally turns into water. So <laughs> you probably will want to thin your black, but mine does not need to be thinned right now because of the, the pot I got. <laughs> Let's see, you're trying to get every little spot of the hair. around that ear Because like I said, you want to try not to mess up as much as you can while you're putting these base coats down. And you can see already, he's, he's starting to look like a head. <laughs> now my, uh, my Bugman's is starting to dry so I can actually go in there and just do my second thin coat to make sure I got a nice layer of Bugman's down.
Okay, and you can see I got my Bugmans down completely now, so that's my uh, base coats. Base coats applied. So now we're just going to let that Bugmans dry for a second. I'm going to pull out one of these green colors to do slight green touch ups. For spots that I hit on the armor, like I hit here underneath the ear, so I just want to bring that back to green. Sorry, let me bring it back in the center of the camera. So I'm just bringing that back to green underneath that ear where I accidentally hit. And also down, well, I'll wait to get that under the chin spot because we might hit that a few more times by accident. <clears throat> okay, so it's looking like that Bugman's is pretty dry. So now there's lots of different washes you can go with with skin. You can go like a uh, Seraphin Sepia if you want to, or like an Agrox Earthshade. I like to use uh, Druchi Violet because it gives you both a red and a blue undertone without having to do multiple different tones. It just gives you those two colors because your eye can't really focus that small. <laughs> so you just take a nice watery layer of Druchi wash and just wash it over this whole Bugman's Glow. Now this we will need to let dry for a few minutes because it is a wash layer so it's going to take a few minutes to dry but you can see it's sinking into all them cracks and creases and giving it some depth. Try and get you some good shots as we're going. That we just need to let dry for a few minutes. <clears throat> you can actually, if you want, while you're waiting for stuff like this to dry, go around and do these other little head bits here and here, like this little green bit here. You could go around and highlight. This little part that goes into the back of his head. Okay, now with me, like I said, I do like to wet blend. I'm going to let this dry for a little bit longer. But uh, I do like to wet blend because it keeps the colors moving one on top of the other. And gives them a natural kind of flow into each other. I'm also going to do some 50-50 mixing on my wet palette. I will try to display that when I do it. <clears throat> so not quite dry enough yet but yeah you could literally just go around and start if you're going to use any of these little spots back here that you're going to turn into like you know metal you can go ahead and just start picking them out so they're ready to go when you want to do your metal later <clears throat> like those two little bolts on the back there. <laughs> All right, we shouldn't have to let it dry too much longer because usually this will this will go pretty quick. I'm just trying to go over a few things while we're waiting for it to dry. You can see I've done all most of the armor on this guy now, including the uh, the back green. He is pretty close to being done with the armor. 
I'll have to do some touch-ups to the shoulder pads once I go around and do the edging on them. Okay, so the face is practically dry enough now. So I'm going to go back with Bugman's Glow and literally start picking out some of these spots like his cheekbone and this raised part of his eyebrow. Once again, you're, you're going to want to stay to the spots that the light's going to hit. So the light's going to hit this side of his face real good because this is where, you know, the light's actually hitting. So you got this bottom part of here on the chin here. The cheek. And then down onto this lower lip. I hope you can see all this. Alright, and then over the top of the brow there. And now for the other side of the face, we're still going to lighten it up with the Bugmans because this is the, uh, this is our main skin color. So we're going to come into the nose here, the brim of the nose. Top of the jaw here. Forehead. Like I said, right now you're still going to want to hit most of it because this is your main, uh, your main underlying skin tone. Hit the ear. Going to want to hit all this part of the face here. Oh, sorry. Down on this cheek, just like the cheek on the other side. Okay, and you can see I hit a little bit of that green again, so I can go back and touch that up later. But uh, you can start to see the face is actually starting to already have a little bit of uh, depth and look to it. Now before I go any farther, I'm going to go ahead and hit my eyes and my stuff because you can come back in and fix these spots later. So I'm going to come in with black on the side and literally just go right into the eye socket. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you come in from the side. This is what makes getting the eyes the, the best like angle. Okay, so you can see I blackened in the eyes. And you can also blacken in the mouth now if you, you so choose to. If you have a mouth that's open or like you want it to be darker. coming back with some of the Bugmans and just bringing it more down into this cheek so that I have more color down here. And I'm also going to go ahead and get the teeth right now as well. So I'm just going to hit those with like a new Shakti bone. And then a quick white scar to give them like a nice look. So let me dig my shafty bone out here. There we go, shafty bone. Boop. New shafty bone. <clears throat> and once again, if you can, from the side, you're going to want to go in and just hit the teeth. And don't worry if you miss a little because like I said you can always go back and touch this up later. I'm going to take a little more black back in there because I got a little too overzealous with them teeth there.
This would also be easier if I had not put the head on, but I was trying to get these done for uh, for the charity and just wasn't thinking and detached them. So this is a lot easier if this head is not attached because you can actually come in from the side and hit these teeth. There we go. I'm going to clean that up just a little more. Okay, and now I'm going to clean up the skin around the mouth because you can see I kind of flubbed that up. Like I said, we can always go back. No big deal. Gonna take open that green again and just do some green touch ups where I've missed and hit this green around the hit this green around the body. All right, there you go. Hope you guys can see that. Just trying to get it so it doesn't look like his teeth are part of his throat. <laughs> All right, there we go. <clears throat> so then, for these eyeballs that we've put in that that black already, you're just going to go back in. This time, try from the front to just literally go in and put a dot of white in there. Same way you did before. You can do it from the side. Just Give yourself that white in there. Alrighty, so now you got the white in there. Now we're just going to add the pupil. Now this you do have to try and come in straight at it. As straight as you can and just try and hit the center of the white. This takes a lot of practice. You can see there's that eye. The other eye I'm actually going to leave white because it... uh. It gives the impression that the eye has been scarred or the pupil is, you know, messed up and he's got that blind eye, which I want because he's got a scar running over that eye. So I'm going to leave it that white. <clears throat> so there you got the one pupil. It's, real, it's kind of hard to see on the camera. I will once again take pictures of this when I am done so you guys can get a better shot of this. Like I said, with this, this black dot, you just want it right there in that center of that eye.
I'm gonna go back and fix more of that mouth. That still something looks off on it for me. All right. So next, I'm going to take the, uh, I'm going to start walking it up to my next flesh color, <clears throat> which is going to be Katie and Flesh Tone. But I want to walk it up to this color. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to try and move this guy out of the way right now. There's my, uh, this is my Bugman's here. I'm going to take the Katie and Flesh Tone and just kind of mix them together. I get kind of a middle in between flesh tone. There we go. And once I have this flesh tone, now I can come back and this is just going to start highlighting those areas that actually are hit by the light. So now we're just going to hit like this cheek here on the brow. This side of the face, because this side of the face is hit more by the light. This side of his face, you still want to hit the brow here, because that's going to still be hit by light. And a little bit of this forehead. I'm going to hit, whoop. I'm going to hit here, over top of this brow. And down on the here, and over this ear. And then up onto this cheek as well. And now you're going to want to get down into this recess here if you can near the lower jaw. Just a little bit. Same on this side. Same thing over here. Alrighty, and now I'm just going to go straight to the Cadian flesh tone. You still want to make sure it's nice and, uh, you know, watery. And once again, like I said, I'm just getting these parts that are closest to the light because they're going to be the parts that are actually getting hit by the light. Down to this jaw piece again. And sometimes you might have to go back a little with some of your previous colors to kind of fix up some of the spots you've overtouched. Like this cheek for some odd reason is just not blending like the rest of the face is. The rest of the face blended real nice. This one cheek is just looking awkward. awkward. So I'm just going to try and bring it a little back down into the rest of the tone of the body with the uh, Druchia Violet. Once again, with real watery, just you want to bring that cheek up to the same flesh tone as all this. So back up to that Cadian. Watery as possible because, like I said, you want to just very lightly have this layer go over the previous layers.
<laughs> it's funny on the camera. He almost looks like he's got a horrified look on his face, but he, he actually looks really good in person. I will, like I said, once again, get photos of this when I get done. But let me get a little more around this cheek, because I think that's what's making it look funny on the camera. <clears throat> I apologize. I have a little bit of a cold. I'm getting over. I do not have coronavirus. <laughs> I'll try and go in here and re get these teeth again a little bit. See, I'm just going back and touching up this mouth just because the uh, the mouth is the main spot I, I'm looking at on this guy that looks weird. And then if we can just get the teeth in there without it completely screwing up, it'd look great. I apologize, I'm really trying to stay on camera this time. It's tough, I'm getting used to it still. Alrighty, and then just a little, if I could get just a little line. Just the little teensiest line I need right there. And if I can get that, we're ready to move on to the next part. There we go. Much better. Okay, so now that we have the KD in and we have the uh, Bugman's Glow Down, I'm going to go ahead and once again step up to Kislev Flash. But I'm going to do that the same way we did with the uh, KD in. I'm going to mix Kislev and KD in together. Get about a 50-50 mix, or 40-60, whichever you're more comfortable with. Make sure it's good and wet. And now you're just going to, once again, re-highlight your highlight areas. So the tip of the cheek, this this brow here, definitely this brow here, the, the front brow. A little bit here on this part, and a little bit here back here. A 
Make sure if one side looks bright, the other side looks the same brightness. And now I'm going to just come over this nose ridge here, this cheek part here, a little bit up onto this cheek part, and this ear back here still needs to be hit a little. down under this lower jaw part here where the light's going to hit. Alrighty, and I think that's starting, you can actually see it now. Okay, so now my last thing is to just do the straight kiss left flush. <clears throat> Once again, make sure it's good and watery. And now I'm just going to come in and just hit the highest, highest parts. So the tippy, tippy tip of this cheek and the very edge of this brow. Some of the nose here some of this brow over here a little bit down onto this cheekbone where we've been doing it and now if you want to just add a little teeny bit more pop, you could take Palette Witch Flesh, which is like your highest of highs for the skin tones for like people. And I'm going to mix that into the Kiss Lev to get a really, really high skin tone. And now this skin tone is just going to be for, once again, just the highest parts. You might not even want to do anything but dot this. I'll say I got a little too much down there. So you can always come back with some of your regular kiss love. I'll fix some of this up. I'm going over it with a very light wash of the bug mints to bring it back into tone a little bit. Like I said, you can always go back and do a little touching up. It's not going to hurt anything. That one cheek is still just, it's a little out of proportion with the rest of the face.
if you need to brighten up areas just brighten them up don't feel like scared to do a little brightening I'm actually going to try and put a little bit more of a line between that eyeball and that cheek. So I'll take a little bit of the uh, Abaddon Black and just pull it into that cheek a little bit. There we go. All right, and then finally, for the sore on the eye, I'm just gonna take some Carabird Crimson, or you can even, let's do that. To make it look more sore, we can use Blood for the Blood God. I'm gonna use my uh, paint shaker here for a second. It's going to get a little loud. Yeah, I have one of those Vortex mixers. They're miracle workers. Okay, so I'm going to take Blood for the Blood God. Get it on my wet palette. Make sure it's good and wet. I'm just going to go straight down the scar. Pulling it up into the eye. See, he's got that bloody spot now. And make it your deepest reds right around where the pupil actually is. All right. Well, lastly, I'm going to go and I'm going to hit this hair. So for the hair, I'm going to take Dawnstone because it's been painted black already. I'm going to give him basically striated, like, just little lines of hair to kind of go in the direction of his, you know, head. Like that. I guess you could call them striations. So I'm using Dawnstone for this, which... It's going to seem bright, but that's okay because we're going to darken it down with some non oil. So I'm just kind of, like I said, right now, bringing just some streaks for hair. Whoop, that one's a bit big. See, these don't have to be like super perfect because we're going to wash them with some known oil and make them look more clean. That one that got real big, I'm going to just bring a little more black into it to thin it out a little bit. Oh, sorry guys. My bad. Trying to get better at not doing that. Okay. So I got my streaks in there now. You can see they're just 
streaks of gray going or lines from back to front front to back whichever way you want to go it's not toilet paper maybe out of toilet paper right now the way the uh, current state is <laughs> okay so now that I have some hairs down I'll just let those dry for a few minutes <laughs> The face is getting pretty close to done. Hope you could see that. I'll just kind of zip around it again here on the camera. And like I said, I will take photos afterwards so you can see it up close and personal. The streaks got a little close on that side. Let's. Bring those back down a little. All right, here we go. And like I said, we'll just let that dry for a minute. Can you do that faint hair outline if you want where people just outline the edge of the hair. So here. And around here. And you'll see in a minute when I do the null oil, it's going to come together. But there you go. I got that little bit of gray going around there to kind of connect the front of the hair to the back of the hair. All right. I know right now it kind of looks like a hair helmet. <laughs> but it will, it will look like hair in a minute, I promise. So you just let that dry for a sec and while you can even do it while it's drying a little bit because like I said this is this is going to be to I'm doing dark hair so I just want to get those striations on there to give it some depth underneath. So now I'm literally just adding null oil over the whole head or not the whole head but the whole hair mullet. Now you do have to let that dry for a second because that is a uh, that is a layer. Actually, let me let me do what I did last time. I will grab the uh, the hair dryer and we will speed this process up. <laughs> okay, bear with me for a minute, guys. I apologize. I'm I'm getting used to this. I will have this all down eventually. All right. So I'm just going to hit something with the hair dryer for a second. Once again, on cool.
Okay. Now I'm going to add a second layer of the Nuln Oil on the hair. And now, while that's drying still, I'm going to take the Dawnstone again. And start just here at the front where the hairline meets. Do this up a little more. And now you can see I'm making like these little quick strokes. Actually, let me let me get a better brush. That brush is not too fancy. Where is my zero? Zero the hero. Ah, oh, there we are. So I'm just going to take the Dawnstone and literally I'm just kind of pulling it to the front of the hair with short quick strokes to give the whole thing texture. do some in the back here too because that hair got a little messy there Now, I once again want to let this dry for a second because I do want all of this to stay here and not disappear when I do my next layer of Nuln Oil. Completely disappear. You don't want it to completely disappear. So there's my some of the hair pushed back. Oops, sorry guys. Hope you saw how I was doing that. I'm literally just kind of pulling it to the front. Okay, and now, Nuln Oil again. This time combing the Nuln Oil from the front to the back. Oops, sorry. Now I'm going to do my last little bit of gray because it just looks good. So pulling it once again, just quick little dashes from the back to the front. give it texture all the way around All right, and then one more thing in Nuln Oil. Once again, come from the front to the back. And that's it. Uh, that's painting faces. It's not as complicated as everybody makes it out to be. It's
pretty much just like painting anything else. You just got to hit the right spots with your uh, lighter and lighter colors. Once again, I will have some photos of how this actually looks um, posted up. Alrighty. Thank you guys for joining me today. Have a good one.